Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Muhammad Dabar Zahid and I'm a first year medical student at Dha Khan University and today's video is going to be about chloroplast but before that I really wanted to apologize to you guys because I know um, uh, I've you know not been posting that often recently because I had uh, two really important exams this week but I'm done with them now so let's just start this and chloroplast is a pretty simple organelle and it's going to be our I believe it's going to be our fourth or fifth organelle and if you haven't done uh, you know the previous organelles so I would suggest please do go and watch the videos on these organelles and they're all interconnected so you know it'll really help so um, let's just quickly get into chloroplasts then Okay, so if I'm to define chloroplast, really, you know, boring uh, class A definition, it's just a flat disc-like organelle, which carries out photosynthesis. We've been, you know, talking about photosynthesis from, you know, grade two, literally, so we know what photosynthesis is. One important distinction that I want you guys to make is that chloroplasts are only present in eukaryotic cells which photosynthesize. So the reason why I've you know specifically mentioned this photosynthesize, okay. The reason why I've mentioned this specifically is because they love to ask you about this and I want you guys to understand that yes, prokaryotic cells, prokaryotes can photosynthesize, but they don't have chloroplasts, okay? They have different structures where, you know, we have all of these um, photosynthetic pigments present and they carry your photosynthesis, yada, yada, yada. We don't really care about that, but just make sure, you know, for your paper one, they love to, you know, sneak in questions like these and you tend, kids like generally tend to, like I used to make a lot, make a lot of these, you know, stupid mistakes. So please keep this thing in mind. And one more thing is that we need to sort of talk about, you know, the dimensions and the size of this. So it's going to be three to 10 micrometers in diameter. And it's going to be one micrometer in thickness. And even one thing, um, you know, I'll go into a bit more detail. Plant cells that do not photosynthesize, even plant cells, you know, for example, I have cells in the roots and, you know, is tarah ke sare jo cells hote hain, they're not going to have chloroplasts. So even in plant cells, they're only going to have chloroplasts in the ones that photosynthesize. And that's pretty important. Okay, so um, let's move on to the structure and I know uh, these things, they were a bit boring, but they love to ask you questions on these. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew. So the first thing that I have is going to be my chloroplast envelope. And it's going to be really simple. So double membrane. And as you guys know, I'm not going to write this on the board, but the purpose of a double to the purpose of a membrane or an envelope is to control the entry or exit of substances out of the chloroplast. So pretty simple, right? The second thing that I have is going to be the stroma. And the stroma is sort of like I want you guys to think of it as the chloroplasts cytoplasm. In the same way how, you know, I have the cytoplasm as, a, as, you know, it's sort of like a place where I have a lot of my reactions happening. That's the same thing as the stroma. So it's basically a colorless gelatinous matrix. And in the same way, it has, you know, my enzymes and all of these things, but importantly one thing that i want you guys to know over here i'll have my enzymes for my light independent state and for all of the a2 kids who are watching you guys already hopefully know what this is but you know um for o level uh, for a level kids a1 kids i don't want you guys to you know really worry about this okay so this is something that we do in a2 so not really relevant right now but aside from this, a few more things that I want you guys to keep in mind is that I'm going to have a small circular piece of DNA 
in the same way how I had a small circular piece of DNA in my mitochondria and again similarly a 70s not a 70s ribosome 70s ribosomes like there will be plural and also my lipid globule globules so you know fat droplets basically again you don't really need to know the purpose over here and that's pretty much it for now so let's move on to we are done with the stroma let's move on to the grana the grana might confuse you guys a bit but it's pretty simple i want you guys to think of them as stacks of coins and we'll look at them in a minute okay stacks they're plural again because we have multiple stacks over there and we have 50 grana in one cytoplasm so i'll just write in one in not cytoplasm in one chloroplast i'm really tired so and in one of my grana so in one grana i am going to have 100 stacked plus flattened sacs and these sacs are going to be called my thyla coins okay they're going to be my thyla coins and alternatively they're also called lamellae so don't get confused or anything like that okay so essentially my grana are my stacks and so these are my stacks and my coins are my thyla coins so i can say that my chloroplasts have grana have they have multiple grana which are composed of thyla coins and we'll see a diagram or everything will make sense but before that we sort of need to you know, discuss what's happening and these thyla coins the reason why we talking about them right now is that these are actually the molly these are actually you know the structures to which we have our actual chlorophyll attached so it's pretty important and my thylakoids and my grana as a whole it carries out my light dependent state because like i'll go into a bit of you know a2 detail that my not even a2 like it's a sort of simple common sense but i know that you know i need my chlorophyll for my photosynthesis chlorophyll so the chlorophyll is activated by sunlight so obviously chlorophyll, chlorophyll will have the light dependent state and they love to throw you you know these small things in your paper one so it's just like simple stuff okay and uh, one more thing is that in my light dependent state i have my atp being made and i don't want to you know go into a lot of detail regarding atp right now because i don't think it's relevant i think you guys might get a bit confused so let's just you know just let i just want you guys to know that atp is being made the purpose of atp what atp is let's not get into that and lastly i have these starch grains and they're really like uh so if you're looking under a microscope they will sort of you know show up they'll be a bit prominent that's why i did not just they are a part of the stroma you know like stroma is like the cytoplasm it's like this a fluid in which you know stuff is floating around and starch grains these starch grains are over there however i wanted to you know write them down separately because it's a really important microscopic observation that we have and they're essentially temporary stores of the carbohydrate i'll write carb made in photosynthesis because i hope you guys remember that photosynthesis creates carbohydrates so that's pretty much it for my structure and let's just talk about this you know beautiful diagram that i've made okay guys um you know let's just come to this really beautiful illustration that i've made i spent like 15 minutes making this the first thing is you know these starch grains now do you guys see how all of these you know yellow starch grains that i've made one two three you don't need to know how many they are they can obviously vary but i want you guys to see that compared to the rest of the structures it's actually you know quite prominent so i have my starch grains and then i have these sort of big like i have a, a smaller option and b this is like a larger option so these larger looking ones are going to be my lipid droplets or my if you you know if you want to be a bit more fancy so it's going to be my lipid globules 
and after that these smaller ones you know these like really really small ones they're going to be my 70s ribosomes after that now do you guys see like i'll talk about you know the granine a bit more in detail i've made this other illustration for them but i want you guys to just you know look at them and how they've they're sort of you know centrally present inside the cell so all of these they're going to be my grana and after i'm done with my grana so i also have this weird looking spot in the middle this is going to be my circular dna And that's going to be pretty much it with uh, for the chloroplast. I, if I miss anything, I'll just come back to it in a minute. Yeah, I just missed the stroma. The stroma, you could just name it any place. You know, this entire this entire place, it's all the stroma. So that's what I want you guys to understand. Just in the same way how in, in a cell, the cytoplasm is pretty much everywhere. So that's the same thing for the stroma over here. Now we're done with this. Let's come to the grana. So this entire structure, this entire structure is called my grana however one of these you know coin looking things this is my thylakoids so i'll say that my grana is made up of my thylakoids and one more thing is that these you know sort of these connections these are given the name inter granal lamellae you could call them intergranal thylakoids. You could call them, you know, lamel lamellae. I just wrote this down because I want you guys to also be familiar with this term. And that's pretty much it. And they love to give you, you know, uh, they'll just make a diagram of this in your paper too. They'll ask you to, you know, uh, name everything. So that's why I thought it was pretty important for you guys to sort of uh, look at this. And I would appreciate if you guys can, you know, uh, go back uh, to where I haven't written all of these things and then pause the video and try to name all of these things yourself as that will really help you out okay guys i also decided to add one more organelle to these uh, to this video because uh, they ask you more about a vacuole in you know your plant cell videos in regards to you know when you're talking about chloroplast and all of these things so that's where the vacuole comes i decided okay, it would be you know it'll be relative to what we're doing so We'll just talk about plant cells because that's important um, from an exam point of view. So what a vacuole essentially is that it's this storage bag. And what this storage bag sort of does is that it's going to store your water, your ions, sugars and pigments. And what it's going to do is, and this is an important term that I want you guys to familiarize yourself with. And I'll just really, you know, make a very crude looking and uh, a plant cell. So here I have my double membrane. Uh, I have my wall and then, you know, my membrane inside of it. So I am going to have my vacuole actually covering all of this area. Okay. Let me make it a bit smaller. So it's going to cover all of this area. I'll have my nucleus, let's say over here and the other thing that it does is that the vacuole because it's so huge and it has something that you know is called hydrostatic pressure but we'll talk about that in another chapter what it does is that this water and obviously you know just the size of the vacuole it pushes the chloroplasts and also obviously the other organelles but it's really important to know that it pushes the chloroplasts to the edge so if I have my chloroplast over here, the presence of the vacuole, it's sort of small, but in reality, you could expect that if the cell takes the water, this vacuole, which is right now over, you know, this size, it could actually swell up and be sort of like this. So it's going to push my chloroplast to the edge. And the reason why I want you guys to know is that this allows my chloroplast to take the maximum amount of sunlight. So if let's say my chloroplast was, you know, someplace over 
here let's say it's not going to take that much um, sunlight because obviously as the sunlight is going to penetrate the plant cell or you know the entire plant tissue the intensity of the sunlight is going to reduce so we don't want that happening we want to maximize the amount of sunlight that i'm going to get so i'm going to make sure that i have my uh, chloroplast over here and that is what it does and one more thing from you know that is sort of important is that the membrane of the vacuole is called my tonoplast and one more thing that i want you guys to appreciate is that my vacuole it's going to be in in a plant cell it's going to be large plus permanent we really care about a plant cell aside from that you know we don't really care large plus permanent so it's not going to change it's just going to be one um vacuole and this entire you know water ions sugar pigments this is given a name of cell sap so they could ask you to name the structure and they can ask you that what is the fluid inside so you know they'll ask you that name this uh the structure they'll ask you to name the membrane then they'll ask you what is the structure uh, what is the fluid inside of it called and then they'll ask you what is the composition of that specific structure and then they'll ask you what is the you know what is the actual purpose of it so it has a storage purpose but at the same time it also one of if you ask me sort of even more important and that is to push the chloroplast to the edge and these type of questions they're really easy to to score in and they're also quite common if you open the past papers okay guys so that's it for our video on the chloroplast and the vacuole so we have uh two or three more videos left of the cell chapter and then we can move on to you know more interesting chapters i really want to do protein synthesis you guys can comment in the uh, you can write in the comments below you can you know uh, make suggestions if you guys want me to do a specific topic after this so you know if your december exams are coming up and there's a chapter that you don't really understand you want my help with that you can ask me and i'll do that chapter first and that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching the video and hope to see you guys in the next video